Welcome to the Breakthrough Podcast. I'm so excited that you are tuning in to the very first episode of the Breakthrough Podcast. So I'm sitting here with Nadia, and she has an amazing story just about how she came to Christ and how God was in her story the entire time. So tune in as I do an interview with her just discussing how God broke through every area of her life to get him and her back together. Amen. Yes. Okay, so get comfortable. Get comfortable. Ooh. Get comfortable. Relax. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're going to go ahead and do this. Let's do so, it. Father, we're going to say a quick prayer for our audience members. Um, God, I just pray that Nadia's story, God, goes out among the world's Lord, that it is a clarity and call for anybody, God, that is experiencing loneliness or trying to figure out where you were in the moments where they feel like they needed you the most. God, I just pray that through Nad um, Nadia's story that our listeners are mm -hmm. able to see where you were evident in her life and then they're able to identify, God, where you're evident in their own life. So, amen. amen. All right. All right, I'm a little nervous. It's all right, girl. I'm a little nervous. God okay, is here. so let's just get right into your story. All right. So, where did you grow up at? Like, tell us a little bit more about your childhood and how that kind of looked like with your parents, your siblings. Yeah. Like, paint the picture. Okay, the for beginning. Us. Yeah, the beginning. The beginning. Okay, so I like claiming that I'm like full African, you know, <laughs> but I was born here. I was born in New Jersey. Okay. Um, I grew up with yeah, my dad, my mom, my sister. Um, in between, you know, African, we always have family members come and stay and live with us. But it was really the three of us. And I'm from Sierra Leone, by the way. I have, some, I have some Nigerian in my roots. Okay. But I'm like Sierra Leonean mostly. So, yeah. Salon, what's up? Hey, y'all. Cassava leaf. Know. Liberians no, eat cassava leaf. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's more so. So growing up spiritually, what did mm -hmm. that look like? Yeah, so my dad is an imam. A lot of people don't know what that means. But an imam is equivalent to a pastor in Islam. So he's a Muslim leader. Mm. My mom is also very devout. Um, you know, the pilgrimage of going to Mecca, they both did that. So he's Alaji and she's Al Hajja. And so I grew up, um, I don't know, I've just, I've always believed in God. I've always loved God. But I didn't know how to, that's all I knew, you know. Islam was all I knew, but I would find myself just, like, outside just talking to God or, like, in the bathroom just talking to God, and then that's not really how you are supposed to pray, I guess, in Islam. So how are you supposed to pray? The five daily prayers, the salat, is okay. basically, if you're not praying in Arabic, it's kind of like your prayer's invalid because there's certain surahs you have to read as you're praying, you know, that make the prayer um, acceptable. So this freedom of, like, I don't know, just talking to God and hearing his voice is it's not there. <laughs> okay, so you had like to go that. to Mass or I went Mass? To the mux, mass. Yes, the mass. I went okay. to the Mucks on every Friday. I went to rabbit school every Sunday. So your dad was <laughs> preaching. Yes, my dad was preaching. And so okay. there's a wall in between the men and the women, but I always, you know, I always know it's my dad's voice. My dad's preaching. Sundays, Arabic school. It's very interesting, though. Okay. I know how to read and write Arabic, but I didn't know how to translate it. So we grew up, you know, mm. memorizing surahs because you need these surahs to pray, right? But I never knew what I was saying. I, in, unless you grab an English translation, you know. You can read and write, read. but you don't understand it. I didn't know it. what I was saying. The whole time we were just memorizing, reciting, and I didn't So know did that saying. look like you would be there early in the morning? You would be the last yeah. to leave? Like, how is it? Is it like the choke? the church culture now mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, PKs, pastor kids, where mm -hmm. they go to church, everybody knows them, the community mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff, like the pressure, like right. you felt all of that. Yes, the pressure. <laughs> okay. The pressure of being, so my mom and my dad's only child. My mom has another daughter who goes to church, so there's my dad. Okay. But, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just the only one of them, so it's like, oh, and salon people will be like, the imam picking, the imam picking and all that, right? So, like, yeah, I'm known as the mom's daughter. And that pressure that I'm sure most PKs relate to of, like, you know, getting it right, behaving well, okay. doing well in school, acting praying correct, you know, day. praying five times a day. Um, Arabic Ramadan. school. Ramadan. Arabic school was, I don't remember what I said to my dad one day in school, but 
I was standing with my like my right foot up and my hand like this for a minute. I forget what I said to my dad, but he was like, eh? That you was know? like punishment. Yeah, I don't know what I said, but he was like, you know, you ain't, there's no favoritism here. Like, you are going to get what everybody else gets. Gets in, yeah. in that type of setting. But yeah, I couldn't miss a rap school for nothing, even if I didn't want to go on a Sunday. Okay, so walk me through. You have this very religious, you know, childhood, growing up background where your dad is this yeah. Islam pastor, leader. Mm -hmm. So walk me through when you started questioning what's going on. Like at what age did you start mm -hmm. to try to like explore different options of truth? Like yeah. walk me through that process. Right. Okay. So I'm thinking about the time for some reason when I was in New York and there was a someone that was evangelizing who came up to us, me and my friend, and was like, um, just think it's about Jesus. I was like, oh, no, I'm Muslim. He was like, oh. You are like he's like I just saw it in, in your eyes. You're like one day you'll see. It was so weird. And then he just like I never saw wow. him again after that. You know he left. Divine encounter. Divine encounter. And along the way, I've had I had another experience like that. So my cousin, she actually grew up in the faith. So okay. My cousin, she actually grew up in the faith. So when her when her dad divorced her mom, her mom married a pastor, right? And oh. so she grew up in the faith from like I don't know maybe. Oh, yeah, nine. So her mom and dad were married. Yeah, they her were Muslim. Uncle, yeah. And then her mom got divorced her mom got and divorced. married a Christian. Married a Christian. A Christian. Yes. Okay. Yes. And he was a pastor. So now my cousin's growing up with, she doesn't even call him stepdad. That's dad. That's you know? dad. Okay. And there was an encounter I had. I was 18. She was going to prom and I was driving. I was going to drive her and her date. And they're like, oh, let's pray before we send her off. So I was like, okay. Pray mm. when we pray, mm. so you're praying to Jesus. Ah, yeah, okay. I drew it in my hands. I'm like, oh, what's the harm? So we prayed, and I'm like, I can't, I couldn't stand up. I wanted to stand up, and I felt this. I'm feeling him now, <laughs> feeling this overwhelming presence that's bringing me to my knees. And I'm like, ah. I want to stand up. What's happening? I'm brought to my knees, and I'm weeping. I don't know why I'm weeping. I, I don't know why I'm weeping. Her mom is just like, you know, this is Jesus. This is the Holy Ooh, Spirit, the Holy coming Spirit upon calling you. you. You know, mm. and I'm just like, this goes against everything I know. But mm. I can't deny that I'm feeling what I've never felt before. And her dad looked me dead in the eyes and was like, if you die today, do you have assurance about where you're going? And I was like, no, I don't know where I'm going to go. Because there's not a blessed assurance or a grace to fall back on. It's like, you better just In hope. Islam. Yeah, you better just hope your good deeds are what you're bad. And you better hope somebody pray for you. After, <laughs> after okay, you let's die. talk a little bit more about that so mm -hmm. our listeners can understand, you know, yeah. the differences between Christianity and Islam. So mm -hmm. in Islam, you're, it's like a record book kind yeah. of yeah. where all the bad things you do, do you have to repent? Like, wh what does that look like? Like yeah. the relationship with that, you know, that God. <laughs> Growing up, and I asked these questions in the rival school. So I remember um, my teacher telling me like, when you die, you you just pray and hope that your good deeds outweigh your bad. But mm. people can also make salat for you, sarah for you. Basically, they can pray after you go that, you know, God will have mercy upon you. Then my dad told me that there's seven rivers, right? Like, you, you can spend time in hell, but if, if God has mercy on you, you can be washed in these seven rivers and then go to heaven. So... That's what I was taught when I was okay. Like, so what? you can die, you can and if you didn't do enough, you yeah. can have people still on earth praying, praying for, for you. you. Mm -hmm. And then your dad later on added some more, saying, "You know, you may go to hell, but if mm -hmm. the Lord loves you enough yeah. or gives mercy, He yeah. can wash you clean." These seven rivers of okay. life, or something, then going to heaven. Okay, very yeah. interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so so your uncle at this point is now asking you, well, your step uncle yes. is asking you, like, do you know where you're gonna go? Mm -hmm. so. And I'm like, oh, I don't. You know, I used to deal with a lot of now I can call it condemnation because I'm just like, mm. I don't know, I don't know. But I knew that this is apostasy. Like, if I accept Christ, there's no going back. Like, Muslims do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That He's God is a wrap. Like, there's no coming back from this. So it was. It was when so you much mean fear. no, no more coming back. Like you can't proclaim Jesus as Lord and then, yeah, convert. and then be like, oh, I'm, I made a mistake. Yeah, like nah, sis, you just said Jesus is Lord. Like this goes against <laughs> everything. Got <laughs> it. So it's basically like <laughs> blasphemous thing. Yeah, like 
towards yes, the to Holy say Spirit. That God as a son, say that okay. Jesus died on the cross because in, in the Quran, Jesus didn't die on the cross. Jesus was replaced with someone else. It's written that Allah spared him, took him away, and someone else died there. It wasn't Jesus. So there's no so dying who, for sin. Girl, who was he? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, okay. but after that experience, I knew I encountered the Holy Spirit, but I was too afraid to accept him. I didn't. But it, it, it made me question, you know, what was that? And, mm. you know, who was that? But I just put it away okay. until later on. Okay, so so that was the first encounter where you felt a tugging. How old were you at this time? I was 18. 18. Okay, so how old are you now? 29. 29. Ten, okay, so 11 years. Yeah. Yeah, that's 11 years. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Make sure I know my math. <laughs> the math ain't math. Girl. <laughs> okay, 11 years. So from that encounter, mm -hmm. what happens next? Like, do you go back to... To Islam, do you do nothing? Like, yeah. walk me through college. Okay. You're, you're you're adult now. Eighteen, yeah. So, I am trying to think. Okay, I I stuffed it away. I actually was like, nah, let me not even feed into it. Truth Islam is what I know, and until so, I have this dear friend growing up. Um, his name was Papa. Papa. And Papa was really like a Papa to me. Like he was young. But he was so mature, mature in like his, okay. you know. So when he passed away, he passed away actually four days before my birthday, right? And he was more than a friend. Like we were, we were lovers of friends, you know. Ah, it was, okay, yeah, girl. it was, it was, <laughs> you know, it was deep. And he, when he passed away, because he oh, unfortunately had lupus, yeah, okay. he had lupus. So I was just like, the grief and the depression hit me so hard. Wow. And that is what made me want to hear from Allah. That's what made me want to get have that answers. Father figure. And like, yeah, like, what happened? How? Like, and it was just so odd to me that it was four days before my birthday. Because I knew he was, I knew he was in the, he was in the hospital. And I was like, oh, for my birthday, I'm going to, like, go and visit him. That'll be my gift to myself. And he died, and I was like. Okay. So in this miss, you're searching for Allah for, like, comfort. For, for comfort. To be near to the brokenhearted, like yeah. God is to us. Like, so you didn't get that, right? Yeah. So what happens next? So then there was one particular day I was praying. So there's a position in um, the prayer called sujood. So my forehead was on the ground, right? And I was just like, I'm over this. Like, you're not talking to me. I'm done. And from that day, I never prayed the Muslim way again. The five day, yeah, five times I, a day. I just left. I stopped going to the monks and everything. And I came in encounter with someone on Twitter who told me that I remind them of Oshun. And at this time. So, like, what reminds you? What reminded me of that? I guess my appearance. The way you look. The way I look. Okay. Yeah. Um, because, like, when you Google Oshun, you'll see, like, a curvy, dark skin goddess. That's what you'll see, right? Okay. So he was like, oh, you remind me of her, right? So at this time, I'm, like, reading into all types of things. Um, chakras, Kemet, Okay, Egypt. so you get this thing on Twitter. Yeah, and this it guy makes messages you, me. You, it makes you research chakras. It w Was that the first time you heard about that? Like, how did you know to Google chakras? Okay, no. So the guy messaged me, okay. right, and told me that I remind him of Oshun. Okay. But prior to that, I was just looking into, I think, I don't know, just on Google, looking into, like, all types of different religions. So okay, I, that's when it. I started reading about, you know, chakras, ancient Egypt, all kinds of different things. But when he told me that, when he sent me that message, I was like, oh, let me read into Oshun. So the seeds were already planted because mm. now you're looking for Girl. this sense of truth yeah. because Allah has let you down. Mm -hmm. So then he just served as, like, a confirmation or, or mm. something for what you were looking for. Yes. Got it. Yes. So demonic encounter. Damn. Yeah, right. And that at the time, like I said, I have like Nigerian in my background. My grandfather's dad. So this, like now coming to Christ and knowing about my bloodline more, I know that all of that was there. But it was, uh, it was hidden. It was hidden, you know. Got it. So now when I opened that door, as soon as I started reading about her, I was hooked. Like, I thought she was me. I was her. I started to hear the spirit talk to me. 
it was it was bad. If you if I show you pictures from that time, you'd be like, who is that girl? Okay, so please <laughs> walk me through how that relationship with Oshun, Oshun started. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I had it's to even okay. pat. I know. <laughs> <Not me wasa. laughs> okay, so how did that how did that look like? You started reading about her and what mm-hmm. were you learning when you first started? Like I want you to walk me through okay. that process so that people who are searching for that or somebody who has probably can relate to this testimony. Mm-hmm can see like your thoughts i want to go into your thoughts like you you read about her you learn she's this chocolate goddess and you're beautiful you're chocolate too so you're just like wow this is me (laughs) like yes what correlations were you reading right right similarities between yourself i hear you yes so when i started reading about her um okay first obviously i see in in the images there's a similarity in how we look right like the guy like the guy said and then she has this love story with this, mm. I'm trying to remember if it's Shango or Ojunsa. I can't remember which deity it is. Okay. <laughs> yes. And she has this love story. Papa just passed away. This story reminds me of me and Papa. I'm oh, like, wow. my mind is going into all kinds of different things. Like, the way we met. And it's interesting because, like, he also knew. I didn't know he had lupus. He hid that from, like, everyone Everybody. except for immediate family. So, But he will talk in a way that's, like, well, Nadia, I want you to live long and get married and enjoy life. I'm like, why are you always talking like you're going to die? Like, But the way their love story compared to ours was just like, what? And then what's their love story like? Huh. Girl, I like can't. Short, like a short 30-second clip. The two deities, to be honest, I can't remember. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but I knew at the time it Well, hit don't me. go looking for it, guys, yeah, if I you don't like, know. I feel okay. like God has made me forget something. For, forget, but you... <laughs> kind of but at that time, uh, yeah okay. at that time it was like an instant connection and then what happened after that okay i started to hear the, the spirit talk to me so did you have to pray to the spirit or did you oh welcome gosh. the spirit in your that's room that's crazy because i did create a, i did create an altar in my room so mm-hmm. you read something that told you to create an altar i saw the pictures of different altars like um, on the internet in Nigeria, the different altar people had. I would read things that she liked. Okay, so like ah. she likes honey, she likes yellow flowers, she likes um, oranges, and that was another thing too. Like I love honey. It was just girl, like a okay, lot of people. I was okay, like, girl. oh my gosh, she's yeah, I me. found my bestie, <laughs> my bestie in the spirit, my spirit, what animal, or whatever. Like okay, okay. Yeah. So I started. It's crazy because yeah, I started creating my room in a way to please the spirit. So I had like. You know, where in the place in my room where I had my family pictures, I started adding to it. Like I started putting flowers, started putting oranges. I started. So that was the actual altar. Yeah. So you created a space, you added different items, and then you said, "This is for you." Yeah. Or or was it just like you were just getting things she liked? Like wasn't intentional. You know, I was just saying like in my head, like I'm getting things she likes. But not more so like this is the altar I'm creating. Yeah, but I didn't know I was creating an altar at that time. Got That's it. what it was. That's you what were it was. creating an altar. Yeah, I just set it up as wow. like, you know, I want to wow. look, I want to look like her. I want to feel like her. And not to like, as you're describing this, what I'm thinking about is when I before I denounced, I probably was creating altars without even knowing that. So mm. that's something I want the listeners to listen to. Mm. You may be creating altars for certain things without even knowing what what you're doing. Because with AKA, we know that that spirit likes ivies and frogs Mm -hmm. and pearls Mm -hmm. and pink Mm -hmm. and green. So we collect all these items and store it into our homes. And there was even a special place. Like I had a bookcase where I would perfectly like decorate it. Mm -hmm. And it was for my AKA corner. Wow. Without thinking. Look at that. That was an altar. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Girl. Wow. Jesus. Okay. So, God, wow. <laughs> Mercy, oh, Father. Thank you, God, for that revelation. Dear, dear right now, people are even thinking now about the different ah. things that they have done in their household. Jesus. So, ha. Huh. Tearing altars down. So, when Jesus. you're, so even when I went about throwing things away it was really me mm-hmm. like destroying, destroying altars, altars in your home okay so so <laughs> let's go back to you um Ow. you're creating honey oranges <sighs> flowers all of those things so once you had that in place how long did it take for you to hear something were you knowledgeable of that um yeah i'm thinking 
Girl, I'm trying. I don't know at what point I started walking to the graveyard, but I would hear the spirit tell me to go to the graveyard at night. And I think wait, I really wait, wait, wait. We yeah. we we, we got to go back. Yeah. So you created this altar, and then you're in your mm-hmm. bed laying down, or you're mm-hmm. getting ready for bed, and you would hear, go to the grave. Yeah, that was like the, the first time you heard yeah. the voice. That would be the, the first time, yeah. Like, and you got up and went. And I got up and went. To which graveyard? There's a cemetery not too far from my house, like maybe a 10, 15-minute walk. And what did you do when you got there? And so literally, I'll just be walking. I think not even just Oshun or the Queen of the Coast, my mom's side, like, Family background, the Islamic background, the witchcraft that was already there, the demons and powers that be, mm-hmm. they all linked up and was like, let's, let's yeah. attach her to the spirit of death or something. Like, let's just get her Got out. It. You know, okay. I think it was a lot of other spirits involved. But um, I, was wa- I would be walking in there and I would be talking to spirits. Like, so. Like conversations. I would see, no. About what? <laughs> <laughs> Girl. And I. It's not really like I would see people. I would see shadows, like okay, like okay, shadow figures. men, right? And I'll just be talking to them. It's like I'll be expressing my my sorrows, my life, and I'll be talking to them. So familiar, I think, like you know, familiar, familiar spirits things. from those graves would appear. And y'all would have com- would they <sighs> talk back and say, "I wish I was still on Earth." Like what conversations? Like it would be more so of trying to comfort me in a way or like tell me like yeah you're on the right path you know you're doing the right thing you know stuff like that misleading yeah. deceptive, deceptive spirit deceptive spirit okay so you leave the graveyard are you going there multiple times <sighs> a week or mm, i went I w- a few times it wasn't it wasn't a thing that happened often okay yeah i went there a few times mm-hmm. but the spirit, the spirit of death was already calling me from Papa's death, for real. Okay, are you telling your friends about these encounters? Is this a solo thing? Oh, my friends, actually, my friends do not know about me going to the graveyard. Or even the, the voices you're that. hearing, or the altar, no. or your new obsession with... No, I think my cousin, okay. her boyfriend at the time was like, yo, this Papa, you started going crazy. When he started seeing like my posts on Instagram about chakras and stuff, he was telling my cousins, like, yo, this is how people are going crazy. Like, watch out for Nadia. So I think mm. everybody, they knew something was wrong, but they also knew that, like, I don't know. She's so going through a process. So you were grieving. posting chakras, like, the information. Were you, like, mm-hmm. just saying, hey, this is what I learned? Yeah, hey, this is what I learned. Posting things that I learned about Evangelizing. different religions. <laughs> evangelizing <laughs> for the Thank enemy. God we on the other side. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, okay. evangelize for the enemy. Just okay. posting about New Age and how you know. Oh, it's, it's just a lot. And so uh, when you found just, this, <laughs> was there like a sense of peace in your heart, comfort? Like, did you find yeah. like, wow, I found the way? Did you denounce Islam? Like, yes. So you yes. kind of were like, I'm New Age now. I'm into Oshan. Yeah, I I I denounced Islam. And I felt like some people, you know, even though King uh, King David in the Bible, he says, like, you know, we are gods. But there's some people that take that to the extreme to say, like, I am God. I'm my own God. God mm-hmm. is within me. You know, I don't need, you know, anybody Absolutely. telling me what to do. Right. So that that spirit of pride definitely came came upon me. That spirit of pride and that spirit of like, I am I am my own healer. I am my own this, my own that. Um, I am of Shun. God forgive. I don't Wait, know you you s- you said that. Yeah, I felt at this point, I felt like she was not only like I don't know my spirit guide, but like I was her in the flesh. Wow. And I'm gonna tell you something crazy. This is why this is why I started to believe that I was in New York. There was a day I went to New York, right, walking around. At the time, I had like tied my hair. You know, I had like um like a I think a, like a gold jewel thing around my head. Did my makeup, whatever. I was walking around. There's a guy that came up to me. He bowed down. This is how powerful these spirits are. Yeah. Because of what I was carrying at the time. He bowed down and he was like, oh, my God. This is, this is a real thing. He was like, oh, my God. My brother told me that if I see a beautiful African girl like you today, I should worship her. I should bow down to her. And I think he saw 
nothing. He saw the Maimata, the Queen of the Coast, or shooting. He saw that in she me. She saw her right? body living in you. Right, right. And he bowed down and started worshiping yes, you. To the point where people, there was this one guy, I remember this Italian guy was like, first he thought he was be proposing to me, right? And he was like, wait, it's not a proposal. He's like, wait, what's going on? And me too, I was like, oh, wait. I think I've hit another level of like, I'm really in spiritual bro- dimension. Yeah, like I'm really, it's like Nadia's not even being seen, it's her. And do you see the parallel where people are supposed to see the Christ in us? Girl. Like, as we die, Christ to, lives. To completely distort my image and just, right. Put, 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 put that. Put that when it's supposed to be Jesus. And as I'm thinking about that guy worshiping that mm. spirit in you at the time, it kind of reminds me of Nebuchadnezzar mm. when he was like, come and bow down and worship me. Ooh. They weren't worshiping him. They were worshiping the spirits in him yeah. that made him believe yeah. that he was God and he was the most high. Um, yeah. Wow. So mm-hmm. as you have crossed over, because at that point, spiritually, mm-hmm. you entered a new dimension. Mm-hmm. I think that's very clear for those who are spiritual, yeah. a different rank in the spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, where are your family? Where are your parents? What are mm-hmm. they thinking? Like, wh- okay. what's going on on that? Like, you're yes. not going to church. Clearly, they notice. Like, what's happening mm-hmm. with yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. So... Now, I'm trying to, like, be as clear as possible, but to be honest, my mind was so... I was not around that, like, I don't remember everything to the T, right? Okay. But I do remember... I do remember that my parents called one of the imams, one of, like, the assistant imams to come to the house, and, well, this is the instruction that they had, to make me sit in ginger paste, so... I sat in ginger pace for about three hours, and they were playing the Quran, and they were, uh, the the guy, the imam, the assistant imam was, like, speaking into my ear, different, different surahs he was praying, you know. I think that was their version of, like, you know, trying to help me deliverance, right? I don't know why they use ginger pace. I don't know why. Probably something yeah. spiritual that, you know. You know, but, um, so they did that, and then, there was a day when they saw that I really needed help. Because I think at the time, they were just like, oh, you know, it's a phase where she's going through a lot. I don't think they knew. They couldn't have eyes to see how deep it was, right? Mm. They didn't have eyes to see what was truly going on with me. But the day that shook everyone was when the spirit told me to drive my car. and just drive, drive my car all the way till I hit the Delaware River and just sacrifice myself. So... As you're hearing these instructions from this spirit, are you oh are you also having conversations? Are you asking questions? Is this spirit speaking back to you, mm, or is it more really, so just I commands? I wouldn't really ask questions, more so command. Yeah, that's good that you pointed that out. Okay, so yeah, more so command that I follow. The spirit now is telling you mm-hmm. to go into the river, crash your car, and do what? And die? And or die? Yeah. For the spirit? Die for, yeah. So. At the time, I got into my car, I'm driving, and I did not see it as a suicide attempt. I did not see it as I'm going to kill myself. I believed that I was doing a good thing for Oshun, or this, right, this cause, and that um, I was not going to die, but maybe, like, enter into a different realm, enter into a different place. I didn't see myself as dying. I didn't see myself as, oh, Nadi's about to end her life. So... So you didn't see it as suicide. You saw it as entering into another physical realm. Yeah, I saw it as a sacrifice that was needed because that's like the the voice was telling me that it was a good thing that I would do. It's a thing that would benefit others, right? And I saw it as I'm not going to die, but I'll enter in like, you know. You know, it's funny. Let's think about like Black Panther when like, um, is it the when... Uh, the king dies, and Chadwick in the, um, in the movie is like, he enters into another realm, and he sees his yes, dad, like, that to. ancestral plane. Yeah, I don't think I saw my, I did not, definitely didn't think I was going to go to hell. Or anything you thought you yeah. were going. Okay, so you get in your car, and you're about to do this? Yeah, I get in my car, I'm driving, so I'm, I call my cousin. I think, what's it called? I text her, I don't remember which one. But I was telling her, like, oh, this is what Oshun asked me to do, and yeah. I think, honestly, you know, a lot of the time, 
the powers and the spirits that be, they see our star before we see it. They know mm. our glory. So I think they knew, because shortly after that, I gave my life to Christ. So I think they knew, like, kill her now. Before, she before because this one, she's a light to her family. So get her out now. But I was at the time knowing what's up. She's Christian. She's like, nah. So she gave, I believe they, they got the police involved. She called my parents. All I know is that someone gave the cops my license plate, right? But before I could get to the river, before they could, um, before I could do what she was telling me, the spirit was telling me to do, my tire went flat. My back tire went flat. Divine interruption. And the cops showed up. I just want to stop and just give God glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Divine interruption. Hallelujah. And I think sometimes God interrupts our plans. Mm -hmm. In this way, it was a beautiful thing. Yes. But in other ways, mm -hmm. sometimes we don't even have the eyes to see when God interrupts our plans mm -hmm. for his glory, for, his glory. for our benefit. Yeah. It might be like, oh, God, I Thank wanted this job Jesus. and it didn't work. Oh, God, I wanted this other thing. Oh, yeah. God, I wanted this marriage. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I wanted this relationship. Mm. But like in this way, mm -hmm. this divine interruption changed the course of your life. Because without that, you would have made it to that river. I would have right? made it. I would have done it. Ha. I would have done it. I like Okay, so your tire goes out, and then what happens? You're just irritated? <sighs> yeah, my tire went my tire went flat, pulled over, and very shortly after that, the ambulance, the police came, right, because they had given my, the police my license. I don't know how. They found me. <laughs> they found me. Um, then at the time, knowing what's up, she's Christian, she's like, nah. So she gave, I believe they, they got the police involved. She called my parents. All I know is that someone gave the cops my license plate, right? But before I could get to the river, before they could, um, before I could do what she was telling me, the spirit was telling me to do, my tire went flat. My back tire went flat. Divine interruption. And the cops showed up. I just want to stop and just give God glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Divine interruption. Hallelujah. And I think sometimes God interrupts our plans. Mm -hmm. In this way, it was a beautiful thing. Yes. But in other mm -hmm. ways, sometimes we don't even have the eyes to see when God interrupts our plans mm -hmm. for his glory, for, his glory. for our benefit. Yeah. It might be like, oh, God, I Thank wanted this Jesus. job and it didn't work. Oh, God, I wanted this other thing. Oh, yeah. God, I wanted this marriage. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I wanted this relationship. Mm. But like in this way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this divine interruption changed the course of your life. Because without that, you would have made it to that river. I would right? have made it. I would have done it. Ha. I would have done it. I like Okay, so your tire goes out, and then what happens? You're just irritated? <sighs> yeah, my tire went my tire went flat, pulled over, and very shortly after that, the ambulance, the police came, right, because they had given my, the police my license. I don't know how. They found me. <laughs> they found me. Okay, so we are going to continue with part two. We left off at your rushing to kill yourself yeah. and um there's an interruption a divine yeah. interruption that happens you, um at that point mm -hmm. so the police found you mm -hmm. um because your cousin called and gave them your license plate number and then what happened from there yeah okay so um i remember one of the paramedics was like just looking looking at me looking at the car like girl what are you doing um and Got into the van. I guess I was telling them about <laughs> telling them about Oshun. God have mercy, and that I'm not crazy because at that point they're taking me to Trenton um, psych ward. Like, yeah, psychiatric hospital, right? So we got there, and there was a man. I don't know. I can't remember what his occupation, what he what he was there, but I remember that he was like hooked, like wrapped around my finger. Like, this is so, it's this, so this strong. This is one of the patients? One of the workers. Okay. I don't know what exactly his job was, but he was, like, at the desk. And um, he was just, like, enamored enamored by me. Like, oh, do you, you know, you're so beautiful. Do you need anything? This, this, and that. Just very, like, on my, on my case. And I had um, someone to talk to. There's a cop that came in to talk to me about what was going on. Um, some other people came in to give me. Yeah, and then I spent, I don't think I, I didn't spend the night there. I didn't sleep there. I ended up leaving late, though. Like, my mom came to pick me up. When she picked me up, the guy was, like, telling me, oh, my gosh, your daughter's so beautiful. You know, she's so amazing. But it was in a way that I was like, huh? This guy, 
Something something's yeah, it's up. It's not just your normal admiration or love for your <laughs> a fellow but it's human the presence being. that you were carrying at the time of that spirit. There's mm-hmm. probably, you know, familiar spirits yeah. meet each other and yeah. the ranking you probably knew like wow, this is mm-hmm. it's kind of like when we're, you know, in Christianity and living for the Lord. Yeah. We know when an um, anointed woman or God is yes. in our presence. Yes. We know the glory Just of like God that. on them. We know mm-hmm. the way that they walk or the intimacy that yeah. they have with the Father. Carrying. So they know what was going on yeah. with you, especially since you were obeying the mm-hmm. Spirit. So what happens after this? Your parents are like, are you okay? They're <sighs> telling you something's wrong. Yeah. And what, were you angry? Were you wanting to go back and do it? Like, What, what was your mind frame? After this, I was very angry. I was very upset. I remember I actually didn't even want them to, like, come and pick me up. Like, I didn't want to see anybody. I was just, yeah. Okay. When we got home, um, I think there was one of my dad's friends in, like, Texas who told who told them that I should go to meet this particular imam, right, in London. At this time, they're like, oh, we don't know. Should we send her to Gambia? Should we send her to Guinea? London, because they're trying to figure out where can we send her to get help, right? To do, um, probably gonna pronounce it wrong, but it's called Rukia. It's like Islamic cleansing, Islamic deliverance, basically. Rukia. Yeah. Exa- um, um, what Islamic is it called? Rukia. Rukia. Yeah. Okay. Islamic exorcism. So, um, I went to London for that purpose. Yeah, I went to London for that purpose, and we got to the Mux. The man was asking me different questions. Um, then he started to hmm. rub my temples. I sat in his chair. He started to rub my temples and ask me questions. And he wasn't touching my stomach, but I felt pain in my stomach, like cramps on another level. You know, it was really intense. And I was just, I flew up in a rage. I was like, no, what is this? I'm getting out of here. My mom was there too. She was sitting down, but I was just like, yeah, what is this? I'm getting out of here. And then he was saying to, like, my mom, oh, the spirit in her is the spirit of a man. So it was just a lot going on. All I know is I ran out of the mucks. I didn't bother to get my shoes because they wanted to take me to, like, another room. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm leaving. And I didn't grab my shoes or anything. I just ran out. And, wow. uh, yeah, I ran out to the sidewalk of somewhere. And at that point I was just praying, like, okay, God. I know there's a God. I just, I need to know who you are. I need to know who you are. Like, I need help. Um, and you just said that just yeah. outwardly, yeah. not directed to anybody. Not directed to anybody. But is is that the is that the place where you realize that Oshan wasn't, Oshun, I can't even say the name right. Uh, yeah. Girl, we don't even need to say her name right. The Mamata spirit, that Okay, that is that when you, spirit, re- when you realize demon. that? That spirit was false. Yeah, that's okay. when I. Well, okay, no, let me correct myself. I didn't. I didn't think maybe that she was false, but I just knew that I needed. A, I needed help, <laughs> right? Um, okay. I think my idea about her didn't change. I didn't think she wanted to kill me or end my life. I just knew that I needed help. Um, so there was a man that was walking past me, and he was like, um, "I pray you get what you're praying for tonight." Huh. Right after he said that. A Christian. I don't know. I think maybe he was. I okay. just remember this dark-skinned man with long dreads. He's like, I pray you get what you're praying for tonight. After that, I just knew I had to go to church. It was like, it's not that I, I, I can't say that I heard a voice. It's just like, within me, it was like, go to church. Like, I knew to go to church. I don't know. But I knew I, knew I needed to go so to church. So you heard a voice, or is this just a knowing? Let me say more of annoying. Knowing. Go yeah. to church. Go to church. A Christian church. Yeah, a Christian church. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Um, let me say still small voice, but it was more so like you yeah, knowing, yeah. Hmm. So I got up, started walking, trying to find my way, um, trying to find my way back to uh, the the mugs, but because I wanted to, I wanted to um, find my mom. But these two, these three ladies, actually, three ladies, three Caribbean ladies, they saw me. You see a girl walking with no shoes in London, like, and it's January. (laughs) So 
they stopped me and was like, what's going on? They're a Christian. God is amazing. They're a Christian. Wow. They're like, what's going on? Oh, no. You have to go to the police. You have to go to the police um, station. And there was an Indian guy that walked up to me, and he gave me his shoes to wear. Then we, then they walked me to the police station. And um, then my aunt, my aunt and my mom ended up f- um, meeting me there. And also the guys from the mugs. And they wanted to take me back, but I was like, no, nah, I'm not going back. I left with my aunt, and then when I got back to my cousin's apartment, mm-hmm. I told, okay, so now my mom's eldest sister is a reverend. Okay, right? this is the one my mom that is one the of six. uncle? No, my, my... A different sister, okay. Yeah, my mom's eldest sister is one of six, so she converted many years ago. Um, so she, I told Water her... runner. Yeah, I was like, I want to go to church. She's like, okay, let's go. I went to church that night. And, um, wow. Pastor was preaching about John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm. Girl. I had never, I'm like, this is my first church service. So I'm like, I'm like, wow. The words are hitting me. Like, you know, as the Bible says in Hebrews, like the, the, the word of God is living and active. I'm like, as he's speaking, I'm 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 getting deliverance as he's speaking. I'm getting deliverance, and then he took me. Uh, we went upstairs to like their upper room, and he a- was asking me different questions. This I remember though. He asked me, said, "Where is Nadia?" Right, and I said, "Nadia's in Africa." Hmm. That and then deliverance started. He started praying like deliverance prayers. He asked the spirit in you. Yeah. And yeah. the spirit spoke back immediately. Yeah. So Nadia's in Africa. At this time, you know, when they say, <laughs> your soul, my soul has escaped the snare of the fowler, forget where that is in Psalms. But truly, like, my soul was caged some, is somewhere else, you know. So instead of me saying, hey, I'm in UK, like, I'm in London, like, Nadia's in Africa. Then we started to, they, they started to pray, deliverance prayers. And, um. My aunt just said, just keep saying Jesus. Keep saying Jesus. The more I said the more I said Jesus, literally it felt like a veil was lifting. And my ear, like my right ear was opening. Even right now, like my ear is tingling. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Like a veil was lifting my ears. Scales were off the eyes, unplucking mm-hmm. your ears. Mm-hmm. So there was like a spiritual covering on you Mm -hmm. during that time and they were breaking through that so did the spirit ever speak again through you other than the africa part or um he asked me a lot of different questions um i can't remember all my responses but i do i do remember that one yeah there was a lot of different questions he asked me and then but i will say though like when i left of course you know during the process so when i left i knew that Jesus is is Lord and the answer, but I was still very I was still very confused though. I was still very confused though. Yeah. Did you go home and like throw away the honey and the flowers and <sighs> the oranges and all the things that you hmm. collected for? When I went when I when we got back to my cousin's apartment, my mom was there. The interesting thing is we were, he was preaching from John one five, right? There was a blackout in the apartment. <laughs> when we got wow. like this sounds crazy but when we got there the lights turned back on like god was really speaking you know like the lights are like yeah because like symbolism yeah because my mom was even like first of all she was like where did i go you know then she's like oh there was a blackout here i don't know what happened now the lights are back on and she's like where were you i'm like oh, i went to church and i've accepted jesus christ, christ as my lord, lord and savior, savior. Amen. oh yeah she was how did what did, what was her reaction she was, um, she was beside herself. I don't, I just remember her face being like, just stunned and just like, what's going on? And at that time, um, I'm just going to say it. Like what I saw in the spirit was because on my mom and my dad's side, there's, there's been altars of like the serpentine spirit, right? I saw, I saw like, like snake, like a snake in her face. Just to be honest, <laughs> like, just to be transparent. She, this is the spirit wow. that's, yeah, you know, like, I saw that, like, the the spirit, the, that that serpentine spirit, the spirit of deception, 
was like, I could now see it. And she was just like, no, what? Like, no. Like, no. come back. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. So what year, how old were you at this time? Now I am 20. Yes, I'm 20. So this happened so January 18, 20. 20. So you've been walking with Christ for nine years now. Yeah, it'll be nine years, January 26. 26. Yeah. Okay. 26, so from there, when did the shift with your parents happen? Was it that mm. you converted and everything was like fine because he's a mm. minister? Was it like they mm-hmm. went ahead and cast you out of the family? Like what? Mm-hmm. what did that look like? Yeah. Okay. So when we got back, um, to the states, um, so much had already gone on, right? In the community, a lot, a lot of what I was going through was very public. I'm the Imam Pekini again, so it's just like, yeah. I think they were just they themselves were overwhelmed, and they're just kind of like, you know, this is a phase. Like, let's just let her be, right? But then, huh, God, I started to. S- I mean, I was already seeing things in the spirit, but now I'm starting to see the right way. So I'm starting to see, like, okay, the deception behind it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, not not them, but the spirit that's working through them, you know. Were you ever scared? Like, even when you were in the graveyard, it looked like your spiritual eyes opened. Yeah, I wasn't as scared. Soon as you was never scared. I wasn't scared. <laughs> you just always were just like, I see what I see, okay, yeah. moving forward. But And that's because... Growing up too, like I would, things. I would, I would see things that my dreams were very vivid. Something else, yeah. <laughs> so I wasn't, I wasn't too scared. But when Ramadan came around, so Ramadan of that year, it was like summertime. I remember I was working at a restaurant, and I came home, and they're like, "Okay," they're saying like, you know, in my language, like Ramadan is starting. You can't be here. You're not fasting with us. Like, what is this? You know, like. Take the shahada again, become Muslim, fast with us. And I'm just like, no, I'm not, I can't do that. If that means like me leaving the house. And prior to that, that same week, I had read the scripture about, um, you know, when Jesus, I'm paraphrasing, I've come to set mother against daughter, father mm-hmm. against son, like, because for my sake, there will be contention, there will right, be strife. And you can't you know? deny me. Yeah, whoever loves mother and father more than me, you know, all of that. Of so it's mm-hmm. like God was prepping me for, hey, girl, it, it's <laughs> time. <laughs> wow. And wow, it was at that point too. It started to get more uh, tension in the house because I stopped. I ca- I stopped hiding that I was going to church. Like at first, I would go to Bible studies and be like, oh, I'm going to. Rutgers Poetry Night. Like, girl, you want a Bible study. But mm. I would say things like to make it not look like I'm going to church. But I started to become more bold. Like, you and see me in my Sunday I'm going, fit. I'm going I'm, to I'm going this. Jesus. I'm going, right? Wow. And so I think that all started to bother them to the point that, like, yeah, there was just one night, me and one of my sister, it was bad. We got into it. They wanted me to, um, they wanted me to, washed with this water girl it was a lot <laughs> so they're always trying <laughs> to they're do trying different to rituals to get you back into alignment yeah but during this phase like something that is pointing out is like mm-hmm. you are having to sacrifice your yeah. family relationships yeah. for god yeah. for, jesus. for jesus and um as god calls us as a living sacrifice mm-hmm. Like, you were becoming that. You were having to accept the mm, rejection. Yeah. Accept, like, this closeness that you wanted with your parents. So now, did you have to move out? Yes. Yeah, so um, that conversation, right, about Ramadan, I said, no, I'm not going to. And I was like, I'll just, I'll leave. I will leave because there's no way that I'm I'm going to take the shot again, the Islamic Declaration of Faith, right? So I told my manager at the restaurant that day, um, like the following day, and he said, okay, I have a friend who's a landlord. You can stay in her basement, and it's probably like 500 a month. So I moved into that basement. <laughs> there was no kitchen. It was literally just the room. Like, thank God. I'm about to get emotional because God has really been preserving me. Mm-hmm. But, like, mm, like, you know, just, like, eating whatever I could get from the restaurant, you know, having, like, my... My cousin, her parents, like, sending me food, like, not being able to, like, just, like, you know, it was just, it was hard. They didn't talk to you at, during this time? No, we didn't talk. Um, I remember it, 
I left the house and I just was like, Mom, I'm leaving. And she just like looked at me. She just looked at me and then just like turned her face. Um, and again, because I know like we battle not against flesh and blood. And that's all, you know, Islam, this is all my parents know. This is what they believe is right. And so much has gone on, like, a lot. That's too much to say. From my family, that's just, like, I didn't even, I I didn't expect for them to accept me. I didn't expect for them to accept my decision. But I just, I guess I didn't think it was going to be that. Rigid. uh, Rigid. Like, cut the rope. Yeah, I think I kind of expected her to say something to me that day when I said I was leaving. I just want to go back to the living sacrifice part Mm -hmm. because at this point you have made altars and done what was pleasing to like these other gods. Yeah. And now like standing up and proclaiming who Jesus is to you and your relationship with them and Mm -hmm. the fact that you're going to church, you were now becoming that sacrifice. You were creating an altar within yourself Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. to be an altar for God. And some of us have to, be grateful family. that we come from fam- Christian background families. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Some of us don't have to go through that. Mm-hmm. Where it's not tension when we mention the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that's something that many people take for granted. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say, like, wow, you're, you're so strong. Mm-hmm. Like, Thank you, Jesus. for your whole family to kind of put you to the side because of your faith, it shows your true love for God. Mm-hmm. Like, do we truly love God? Mm-hmm. That we're willing to sacrifice mm. our the position yeah. that we had, and it reminds me of Moses. Like he left what the Egyptians were doing mm. yes, to follow the Lord. Mm-hmm. He left his, mm-hmm. you know, mother at the time, and his yeah. family, and yeah. brothers and sisters at the time, and mm-hmm. position, the high ranking, mm-hmm. to follow God and do His calling. So I yeah. think it's very beautiful, and I know it's like a pain point. Mm -hmm. But God will honor your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And for anybody out there that's going through that, like what would you say to encourage them like during that time? You're in this basement. You're getting stripped. Mm -hmm. You have no kitchen. (laughs) You're just, you know, you're you're kind of, you have no community, family community at this point. Yeah. Okay. So I would say, you know, for me, I knew that nothing and no one was worth Losing Jesus. And let me be honest, I wasn't a mommy's, mm. mommy's girl or daddy's girl. We already didn't have a close relationship. So let me be honest. It's different when, like, you and your mom, you and your dad are tight, and then that separation is even harder. But that made it a little bit easier for me because, you know, I wasn't, we weren't that close. But I will say to you that, as as the word says, whoever gives up mother, father, brother, sister for me will receive so much more there's there's nothing and no one that can compare to having jesus in your life um because i've talked to a few people who they're coming out of different religion and they're meeting that family contention and i'm like but you have to think about who you found you know let's wait let's weigh the matter (laughs) let's weigh the matter jesus is holding more weight than anything and anybody else. Amen. You have to really just, I, you just have to really treasure your salvation and believe that the word of God is going to manifest in your life. He will restore. He will. His glory will speak. You Amen. are, you are the vessel that, in the end, your family will turn around and be like, "Okay, we get it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we <laughs> like, thank praise you, Jesus. the Lord. We know you went ahead if of If Moses us. never left, who would? We wouldn't even have a Moses to even find ourselves in the story or even see how God yeah. manifested in his life. Yeah. Um, so at this point, you're doing that. How long did that season last, like compared mm-hmm. to where you are now? Yes. Um, is the relationship still the same? Like it's a rift. Is it better? Yeah. Um, okay. So when I was there in the basement, like we didn't talk, I think, for like three years. Three years, mm-hmm. no birthdays. Sorry, no birthday calls. No Christmas. No, no Christmas. Well, I don't think. Yeah, those, yeah, <laughs> they don't. But, like, but no Mother's Day, Father's Day, like, yeah. all of the different. Okay, so I was, yeah, and that's the thing, too. Like, now we have to deal with my, me not having offense, right? Me realizing that this is a spiritual war. 
walking in love, walking honor. But at the time, my birthday is before my mom's, right? So I'm April, she's May. And at the time when she didn't, when they didn't call me, I was like, mm, mm, you didn't come for my birthday. <laughs> so I was just, I we didn't have we didn't have communication until, um, maybe like I don't know the third or fourth year, you know. And it was from then it's been very sporadic. Um, now recently, like past two years, it's better. Um, it's not what it should be, but I know that God. God's going to get the glory. My heart is paining me right now. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's good. Wow. It's not it's not what it should be yet, but my dad said this thing. Mm. Wow. He said podcast Amen. the breakthrough podcast when the breakthrough Amen. happens for your family hey, I, I want it. to see it come <laughs> Amen. It's happening. she will come back and testify y'all i will may we I still will. be intact so you can come Amen. back and testify. Amen. oh no it's it's gonna happen Girl, from episode one you're giving me a whole you will I come back and share this story now. so Amen. that was four years ago so today life what does that look like are you, you know, I see on social media, you've been sharing the gospel more. You've been sharing your story. Even how we connected yeah. was I heard a snippet wow, of your Jesus. your story about the car. Didn't even know how <sighs> intricate it was, how God was yeah. in it. But what's next? Like, are you, ca- clearly you're called. <laughs> Evangelizing, telling your story, yes. your testimony. Mm. Like, I know it, it was pr- probably hard for you to even open up about mm-hmm the mental attacks or, Mm -hmm. you know, wanting to kill yourself and stuff. So, like, Mm -hmm. what's next? What's next? Wow. That's, that makes me so happy to think about because I truly believe that this ninth year is a year of elevation and just truly coming out of the wilderness. Good girl. (laughs) The past eight years have been, Wow, 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 wow. Something else. And I truly believe now, because, you know, I dealt with a lot of, like, even doing this podcast today, like, we spoke about it a little bit. It's it's very timely. And I didn't have to, when you asked me, I didn't have to think twice. I've been asked before, but it will be um, like, uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, think, I think it might be two things. It wasn't time. And I also still was dealing with, as vocal as I can be, I was still dealing with being, like, muzzled or being afraid to talk mm-hmm. about certain things. How far should I go? What should I not say? I want to I wanna protect come. I want to protect my family. If anything, I want to protect, like, my family. A lot of them don't even know better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to come off. Hmm. But this time, when you asked me, I didn't even have, like, any questions. So I know God is, like, calling me into a season of, um, into that season of speaking, that season of um, what is it? Declaring, arise and shine, for your light has come. Amen. The glory of the Lord has risen upon. And you. even to give a background about the podcast, like mm-hmm. I was in ministry, you know, years ago, and I was very, you know, public in terms. And when I denounce, I was doing things sporadically, like mm-hmm. here and there. But mm-hmm. even bringing breakthrough back, um, I had a come out conference virtual conference like the last few years mm-hmm. but the brand of breakthrough which stands for there's an eight in break which stands for yes. new beginnings yes. um so yes. many people have been talking to me when you're starting breakthrough again i have gotten words confirmations and i've wow, just been like oh that. my god like i don't want to go through ministry Jesus. i don't want to go through warfare yeah. and like being called to deliverance there's a lot of stuff that comes with it and honestly, it went, goes back to I wasn't trying to be a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. But when I l- start to hear about the sacrifice mm-hmm. that people do for sharing their testimony, yeah. proclaiming Jesus, ministering to others, wow. um, that is the price that we have to pay. Yeah. And we can't run from it. Run from so it. I'm honored that, you know, you I'm came. Grateful. And I'm I think grateful. I'm in my ninth year of walking with God. Really? You're in your ninth. Yes. Come on. So um, I definitely believe, like, God is doing Amen. something. I just want to bless you for sharing your story. Um, Is there anything you would say to the person that is scared to share what God has put on their hearts? Wow. Like, how did you fight those voices or lies? Like, Mm -hmm. don't do this. This is not the right thing. Like, what can you say to encourage them to, to do the same? Yeah. Okay. I would say, because what, what's more so 
held me back is, and I'm trying to figure out, well, yeah, the shyness, timidity, because it's weird. I'm bold, but I'm also really shy. And I, I know, think that I want comes you to look from, at the camera tell them. Oh, tell, okay, <laughs> I think that comes from just my upbringing of being like this little Muslim girl, you know? <laughs> but I would tell you that hmm, it's bigger than you. We hear that all the time, right? But truly, it's bigger than you. When I posted a reel recently and the DMs and the messages that I got, the kind of messages that I needed to hear this right now or I don't know what was going to happen to me. I needed to hear this because I'm searching for God. When you realize that your your speaking is someone's deliverance, like for real. Your speaking is someone's mm. answer. Your speaking is someone's hope. Your speaking is someone deciding that okay, I'm I'm not gonna commit suicide today. There's someone. There's something that I need to. There's there's a God I need to search for. I need to seek. When you truly realize that nothing else matters, um, I know. I personally have not been like afraid of like. The, the warfare i've been more uh, more afraid of like oh i don't want people to see me like <laughs> i don't want to be so visible and like known but it's not me being known if you're afraid of that too having attention or eyes on you feel like you don't want to be you know whatever i let your light so shine to give glory to our father in heaven so yes mm -hmm. it's you you're the vessel people are gonna see um prophets leslie will say she says that love her. <laughs> she says that visibility attracts stones. It's true, you know, it's gonna come. But you are the representation, the ambassador for Jesus. You love him. You know that if not for God, you wouldn't be here. If he's truly your all in all, there's nothing you won't do for him. So do it for the kingdom, do it for Jesus, do it because we owe him. We owe him our all. Amen. Amen. And I just want to talk to the people that Maybe you're searching for truth. Maybe you're mm. dabbling into. So I want you to look into the camera and just let the listeners know who are like scared to share their story. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're scared about the warfare or like a different aspect of it, but they're just hesitant about sharing mm -hmm. where God has taken them from. Yeah. Yes, I would say, you know, when I released the reel about just a snippet about me driving into the well about to drive into the river the messages that i got from that really inspired me that okay now you can speak you know it's one thing when you when you share you can share you know the word of god but then your own personal testimony is is you you're stripping yourself you know bare but you're stripping yourself bare for the glory of god everything is to his glory if we're truly going to be living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto god this is our reasonable service like worship is more than singing songs worship is is this life your total life that you're living right mm -hmm. so just seeing those messages and seeing that like okay this came right in the nick of time of someone searching for god literally talking to a girl who is also grew up muslim um and is like searching for god like what? It's, atta it's attached to people's breakthrough, people saying no to suicide that day. So God has given you a story. He's turning your mess into a message to save the lives of many. It's, it's, it's in um, Genesis 20, 50, I believe, that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, to the saving of many lives. So your testimony, we have to know that truly it's bigger than ourselves. Amen. And for the person out there that is searching different spiritual practices, mm -hmm. ancient gods, demons, goddesses, yeah. and you know, especially in this culture, like um, oh, Beyonce so is very familiar with that spirit that you yes, dealt with. Yes, she is. Um, yes, she we is. have seen some celebrities like Summer Walker mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Erica Badu like put their altars. Literally like on the internet for yeah. people to see. Yeah. So in the mm. same way that these people are saying, this is my God, this is who I'm serving, this is who I'm giving glory to, we too as believers yes. must put on yes. our armor of God and say, this is God. This is God. This is my God. Exactly. This is what he can do. Exactly. He is the most Amen. high God. Amen. So I just speak Amen. to everybody searching, searching. Mm -hmm. 
God will meet you. If Amen. you ask the Lord to show up in your life, he will show up. He will. Because even will. with myself, <laughs> I said a prayer. I said, Lord, if you're real, show oh, me. me. That's it. That's all he Lord, needs. if you're real, show me. That's it. And I don't want to do this quick where I pray mm. once and then forget about you for three more months. I want to do this everyday thing. Amen. And the Lord yeah. came so evident. Oof. He came like, like a, a flood. Wind, like a flood, like fire. So for any of you who are confused about who is mm. God, who mm. is the most high God, yeah. who is the single source of truth, Yeah. what is what, mm. I, I ask you right now to say this prayer with mm-hmm. me. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Noah, God of David, God of Esther, God of Ruth, God of Ezekiel. Like, say the names in the Bible and and say that God. If you are real, show me. Amen. And watch God blow your mind. Yeah. Watch him show up and show you where he was. Show up and show out. Every area of your life. Yeah. As you're talking, uh, God has been so evident. He's always been here. He's like, yeah, I've always been here, but I'm gonna show you again. He's like, you need a, you need a little louder. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll show you. Amen. Amen. Well, Nadia, Thank God you bless your ministry. I'm so excited to see, you know, the different doors that are gonna open for you to share this story, yeah. especially in our generation where people are literally messing with demonic spirits and have no idea heavy, from heavy. horoscopes to. Mommy Watas to okay, deities okay. to Greek life I, to so, yoga so much so many it's not hiding like a, at all and, anymore and, and some of it it's like mm-hmm. as soon as they open the door there's so much things in the Oof. background like you shared mm-hmm. with your family they're just waiting to just, just capture waiting. you and yep. tie you up they're like yeah let's go wow and I love what you said like literally the level of darkness and deception that we're at now the kingdom of God has to be as as potent. bright and potent and powerful mm-hmm. to match up what to super uh, see, see what, they're what, the, what they're doing what the enemy is doing what they're doing every demon shall yeah, bow yeah we have to speak That's every demon reason. shall bow amen. to the name of the Lord amen. every demon shall say Christ, Christ is, is Lord Lord amen ah. that's why we have to speak so amen. I know right now the Lord is so proud and pleased oh, and he's so amen. happy thank you for coming <laughs> thank to you the so Breakthrough much. Podcast for our listeners thank you. thank you for taking the time to listen please share this with someone, yes. post this on your social media. Give us comments, feedback, yes. suggestions yeah. as you know I enter into this new journey of podcasting. Yes, Hopefully, exactly. you'll be back. I'll be to back, girl. I got things to say. And, you know, maybe you'll you'll come back and you know let Amen. us know what else you want to hear from her. Maybe we'll do a part mm. two. Okay, yes, with, like some That'd questions or so that people yeah. have. Um, I love to. I'm so grateful. Any Thank final words? You. Final words. Well, I'm grateful for you. I thank God. It's not, nothing is a coincidence in the kingdom. And the day she came up to me, I think pink, I was so touched. Oh my God, yeah. I was so touched because, you know, people can listen and hear you. But it's another thing, like when you're done speaking, for someone to give you a little word of encouragement or, hey, sis, I'm here. Hey, sis, I'm praying for you. So when you did that, I was really, I was like, oh. So what happened is (laughs) um, we met at the Think Pink conference. Yeah. She actually gave a testimony about. Um, her encounter with Prophetess Leslie, and she was just praying to God about, like, what she's going through with her dad, her, her uh, you know, her dad being a Muslim pastor and things. And she gave her testimony, and I wrote her name down on my prayer <laughs> list, and I saw her later on after good. the service, and I was like, hey, sis, I'll be praying for you. Like, mm. have your name written down. Really like, thank you for that. sharing. Your story was just yeah. phenomenal. And we kind of just left. We didn't exchange numbers or anything. Mm -hmm. And then I saw her video that she posted, the reel she talked about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so powerful. But I didn't put the two and two together. Mm -hmm. I just was like, I think I messaged you because my spirit was like, this is her. Without knowing I had talked (laughs) to you already. And she was like, oh, hey, Lorena. And she said it like she knew me. So I was like, like, let's go back to this girl. (laughs) And I was like, it's the same girl I met. Little did I know you were going to be the yeah. first person Look, that was going to be interviewed on the Breakthrough Podcast. So Powerful. I'm so honored. Thank you so much for yeah. coming. I'm humbled that you decided Beautiful. to share your story for the very first time, mm-hmm. like the full story um, here. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Oh, wow. It's, your story was this emotional. Was it made me want to cry. This is divine. Yeah. It's just, I definitely want to just appreciate you and i thank god for what god is gonna do here it's the launching pad for a greater 
the greater, the next level that God has for you. I'm so excited to see where God's going to take us. And yeah, know that <laughs> Jesus is real. Jesus loves you. Like loves we said, you. just ask him. And thing is, sometimes he has to break us down to be humble enough to ask. Because that's where I was. I was broken down. But don't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just thank, ask him. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening in um, and hearing this breakthrough moment. Amen. And I pray that this breakthrough moment will be um, a reason why you have a breakthrough moment in your life. Amen. All right. Bye. Episode one is done. Yes. That's good. <laughs>